What's up guys? It's July 2015. I have not done a shop update since September 2014. So I thought I would take the time and go ahead and do that. As the car passes. I'll tell you what, I haven't done as many projects as I wanted to get done the last month because it's so stinking hot. As you can tell, I'm in a garage. No air conditioning and it has been just as humid as all get out. It's just it's almost unbearable to be out in the garage working. So uh, I have done a couple of things um, since my uh, last video, which was a coffee table. I took an old fire pit base and made a top for it. Now I cut a circle out and well, if you want to see the video, you can click on the screen here or check in the description below the video. But even though it's so hot, we did manage to get out in the garage and do a little belated spring cleaning. Did a lot of moving around, uh, and I want to show you why we did a lot of this moving around because there's a specific tool that is new to my shop, and it's something I'm very excited to get started in. In fact, you can see it behind me. So let me break it down for you and show you what it's all about. Come with me. Oh, oh, there you are. Like I didn't know, I didn't move the camera just now. As you can see, I have a lathe. I know nothing about lathes. Well, actually, I do know just a little bit, and I'll tell you why. I met a guy in town, uh, a woodworker, really the first woodworker I've met around here. Uh, he invited me to check out his shop, so I went over, and he's a big lathe user and a uh, scroll saw artist. But he has a big, nice jet lathe. But uh, he basically uh, showed me how to turn some pins. Here's one of them. It's called a slimline pin, and I have no idea what kind of wood that is, but it's um, a gold-plated uh, kit. So anyway, I made this one for myself, and he also let me do another one, uh, which was actually made out of Corian, the countertop material for my wife. So I actually had a lot of fun turning the pins. Uh, in fact, so much fun, I really started to give lathe uh, uh, turning uh, a lot of thought, which I had never really thought too much about before. Uh, so this lathe actually went on sale, uh, and he would kind of put the bug in my ear a couple of times, so I, I finally ended up buying it. Uh, it's a Rikon. The model number is 70-100. It's one half horsepower. Uh, it comes with the tool rest base, or I guess what's called the banjo. The tool rest itself, uh, three inch face plate. A, uh, I guess that's called a spur bit. I think this is called a live center, and um, this, I don't even know what this, what this is called. It goes out two and a half inches of travel. Uh, I don't really know what to say, it's six speed, it's adjusted by a belt, over here. And this back part flips down, and you can unlock. The whatever you call that, I don't even know. And then you can kind of raise up the motor and adjust the belt. So one, two, three, four, five, six speeds. Uh, the slowest is 430 RPM. The, the fastest is 3900. So you've got access to the, the bottom and the top pretty well. So, and it also has indexing holes, which I have no idea what you do with those, but there's 12 of them. So, I have turned it on, but that's about all I can do. Apparently, buying a lathe is, uh, is not the end. Uh, you have to have some tools and uh, stuff like that to even use it, which I don't have. So, I can't really do anything with it. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to get some tools eventually so I can do some pin turning. Uh, but I need a mandrel, uh, a, a, a pin mill. I need... Uh, a grinder to sharpen the tools and a few other things. Uh, also I want to mention this it is a 12 inch swing by 16 inch so that's the size of the lathe. I didn't realize just how much all the tools would cost especially to get something decent um, so I was looking so instead of having to buy a grinder I looked at the carbide tools which I've seen a lot about easy wood tools on um, various places on YouTube but even those are uh, a pretty penny so 
I kind of feel like either way I go, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a good chunk of money. I'm trying to sell some music equipment that I have in order to pay for some of the uh, tools that I need for the lathe, as well as to pay the lathe off itself, honestly, to be frank with you. I've got this 700 watt 410 cabinet, 500 watt amp pad, a Korg Toneworks tuner, and I've got another combo amp over here, it's a 15 inch with a horn, 360 watt. If you're in the Atlanta area, shoot me an email at cmrwoodworks at gmail.com if you're interested. It works. Still works. But anyway, I'm so super excited about this lathe. I cannot wait uh, to be able to eventually get some tools to be able to do something with it. In fact, I even have this old piece of oak I'm already put on the sides. I hope I can uh, turn something uh, with that. So, But anyway, that's the lathe. That's the new addition to the shop. Move over here. I do have a uh, oscillating spindle sander, which I showed you uh, two videos ago. I did like a, kind of like a product tour. And if you rotate this way, I move the drill press to the left side of the wall. I move, pushed my table over that way. I plan on putting French cleats all along this wall, and I'm going to do a clamp rack in the back to finally get my clamps off of my table, which are just hanging on the edge. And you can see the scroll saw, which my wife has been doing a lot of. Let me show you. She's been doing a lot of monograms that people hang on their doors, and she's been kind of just messing around doing other stuff. So I don't, she's working on something here. I don't know where it is, but you can see those letter, numbers she cut out. Uh, I think she did a pretty good job. She's uh, improved greatly since the very beginning, the first time. And of course, I've got my table saw and the planer on the base that I built. So, And the lumber rack over there, which I'm planning on taking down. I'm gonna basically burn most of that. Just it's it's been sitting there for two years. I'll get a little smaller wood rack and probably put it up on the on the wall up here in this blank screen that you're looking at. And if I stand here looking at my lathe, if you look straight up, there's a big blank wall. Uh, in fact, instead of doing the French cleats right here, I may build some other kind of cabinet or something to store all the lathe tools and the chisels and everything else that I buy for the lathe. I plan, plan on putting a grinder, should I go that, that way right here. I'll probably move that sander somewhere else. So that's my plan for this wall right behind. I have a big uh, kind of a lathe workstation. And let me just mention this work, workbench. Um, I, was gonna, I was planning on buying a bunch of 2x4s and building this big workbench to put all this stuff on. Uh, but my father-in-law had this in his, sitting in his basement. It's kind of a thrown together uh, workbench, so I just grabbed it, added another 2x4 in the back for support, and it works out just fine. I think I'll use it. I cut it probably about three inches off the legs uh, with the circular saw just to make it a better height. What I read is the center for the lathe kind of needs to be elbow height. So based on that information, I cut the, the table to where that would end up being true for me. And I'm kind of tall, but I threw a, a old scrap table top on the bottom just temporarily just to get some stuff off the floor and stuff off of my work table and just tidy things up a bit. So as you can imagine, I've been watching a ton, ton, ton of YouTube videos on turning, uh, especially pin turning. So a lot of, uh, a lot of the people um, that I've been watching off the top of my head are Carl Jacobson, RJB Wood Turner, uh, Mike Walt. Uh, and as far as the pin turning goes, Dima from Dima's Woodshop does a lot of cool pins. He does a lot of casting, which is really cool, which I wouldn't mind getting into. And also, if you haven't seen Chad Schimmel, check his website, check his YouTube channel out. I'll put a link to all those guys in the description. But Chad Schimmel does some stinking cool pins. He makes some pins out of old watch parts. He casts them into. He just is so cool. You have to check them out. He's got an Etsy store where he, where he sells all. All of his pins and some watches and stuff, but I'll put a link to his YouTube channel as well. I've been getting a lot, getting a lot of inspiration from him and Dima and all the guys I mentioned before. So that's it. I just wanted to kind of show you around my shop, a little update for 2015 and my new lathe. So which I'm super excited, super duper excited to get uh, started in. I hope you have a good day, and I do have some things planned. I'm going to be building a kitchen table for my sister-in-law as well as a baby crib. 
So those are two things coming up in the next couple of months. So stay tuned, subscribe, and you'll see those videos when I post them. Check out my Facebook page if you want to see updates on those builds. And uh, I think that's about it. So later.